Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Nerd Variety Podcast. I am Josh. I'm joined by Hunter and Hannah. What's up? Hello. All right. And today we're going to be kind of reviewing uh, some of the awesome stuff that was announced at San Diego Comic Con this past week. Oh my as well as some characters that we want to see that haven't necessarily been announced uh, or aren't currently in development. So uh, what do you guys think? What was some of the stuff you're most excited about from Comic-Con this week? Or last week, I guess. There was a lot of stuff. I found a Star Trek thing in my, my looking up with what they talked about. What was the Star Trek thing? Um, that, um, they're essentially making a new series. It's got like, it's a kind of short little episode series about Jean-Luc Picard, um, kind of that takes place after the next generation. And it's got some, I think it said it had some, uh, yeah, some of the classic characters coming back. So, uh, the guy who played Data, he'll be back. I know his name. I just can't pronounce it. Um. The kit was pretty under wraps, too. I, I never heard anything about it before, they actually, before I saw the trailer. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember they had made a trailer for it. I thought that was just a movie, actually. I, I didn't really look too into it, but you said it's a, it's going to be a series? Yeah, it says it's a, um, um, probably going to be like a 10-episode series, and it's actually going to be coming out kind of later this year. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, possibly 2020. Again. Oh, does it say that? Is it? I just think it's really interesting, like that they're having Patrick Stewart do it. It seems like they are, because um, he's getting really old. Yeah, but uh, he's one of those that I feel like has been old at least since uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation first came out, which has right. been a while. I mean, yeah, I mean, he definitely seems to be one of those people who never like never really ages, but kind of for the opposite reason than a lot. So like yeah. Tom Cruise is the typical, he just never looks old. Yeah. Patrick Stewart has just kind of always looked old. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way about him <laughs> Helen. I guess it hit him. Yeah. We, and we've all seen Logan very mm-hmm. old in that, but that was meant yeah. to be, you know, in mm-hmm. the future, but I wonder yeah. how much of that was him actually looking old. <laughs> yeah, but apparently he just turned 79. Wow. Damn. Yeah. That's- so he's old. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially to still be acting at that age. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, That's pretty impressive. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with the series because they're not going to have him, you know, doing all the same stuff he was doing back in Next Generation. Nope. Uh, nope. Just because he's probably physically <laughs> unable to. Yeah. Although, I mean, he was still a fantastic. Uh, Xavier in Logan. True, but it was a very different sort of role than he played in the original movies way back in the day. Right. Well, again, again he again you could see the age on him and Yeah, he was supposed to fall falling up kind of falling apart and mm-hmm. be the one to be, you know, picked up and, you know, helped out. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it maybe helps that he was always in a wheelchair. Yeah. Like no, he can't walk, so uh, so, okay, uh, so I don't, uh, did they just, like, give more information on that? Because that, that was announced beforehand. That was announced Yeah, before. I think it just gave some more information. Yeah. Okay. And the, and the trailer. Yeah. I thought the, was it another trailer? Because I think there was already a trailer for it, or I could just be. Yeah, I think there was a different trailer. Okay, cool. Maybe you're thinking of the Star Trek, Dis- another Star Trek Discovery trailer. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that. I mean, I saw that trailer a long time ago. Well, I say a long time ago. Like, <laughs> two years ago, whenever mm-hmm. it came out with that. Um, but yeah, uh, Josh, what, what about you? What have, what have been some really exciting announcements for you? Some, for me, were um, Young Justice Season 4. Uh, I've been watching the current run of Just Young Justice Outsiders. Wait, what? I didn't see that. Yeah, well, yeah it's, you it should. Was, right? it's more of a post on Instagram because they're still not finished with this current series. I know. So they just kind of announced it. Uh, what the guy who voices uh, Kari Faiten, who voices a lot of characters, but not, but not one important one. Um, he's going to he's, he he announced the Young Justice season four logo on his Instagram, and so I was like, oh, this is this is awesome. That's so cool. I didn't know that. How it was going to end yet? Because you know, still have. I think, mm-hmm. 
yeah and, you know where they could go after this because they they, they mm-hmm. plug in so much in the show yeah i'm doing that whole thing right now where um because it's only available on the dc universe mm-hmm. uh so i'm just waiting for all of the episodes of the new season to be aired so i can pay for one month and just binge watch all of them right <laughs> because, yeah uh, otherwise i'd be watching them right alongside you because i know they're coming out right now yeah this is gonna be a this is gonna be a tough year for uh, uh for subscription streaming yeah. services. when does the disney plus thing start uh, i think that's sometime near the end of this year or it is may it? be next year i was yeah, thinking it's it was the next time. year or so they want to put captain marvel on the sh- on there as you know the, the first uh of the Marvel First movies movie. because this one's not going to be on Netflix. Yeah, mm-hmm. and after that, it's going to be the rest of them that are going to air on Disney Plus. Not so sure about the Spider Man, Sony Spider Man, how that's going to work out, but yeah, all the pure Disney ones will be on there. Uh, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's happening? Sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, along with uh, Young Justice being on. DC Universe, you've also got uh, Doom, Doom Patrol, which I haven't seen, but apparently there's going to be another season of that coming out. It uh, is, is a, a hilarious, apparently- very dark, very, like, whoa. Like, yeah, well, I watched um, Titans because I grew up on Teen Titans, the animated show, and loved it, and I had, I was like, I had to watch Titans when it came out, and it's the same character, it's the same like universe essentially so i'd imagine it's the same sort of really dark vibe so yeah. it seems really cool i just again i'm uh waiting for a month where i can <laughs> pay for one subscription and binge watch just everything i can find on there yeah, yeah. you're gonna have a busy month because you'll yeah. also have uh, they're also releasing a harley quinn uh animated mm-hmm. series like adult yeah. adult or- oriented harley quinn show um, yeah i don't know if i'm gonna watch that no. Oh, I am. I am. Are you? I definitely am. Yeah, love Harley Quinn. It'll be it'll be a, f- a fun take on Harley. You'll get to see her as she is in the comics because they they start to become a little more risque and just do do whatever they want. Let her do whatever she wants. Yeah, mm-hmm. and kind of become the pool of DC Universe. I just actually found out. Apparently, I guess this shouldn't be surprising, and maybe I already knew it before, but uh, <laughs> forgot. Apparently, she is. Uh, I don't know. I guess she's supposed to be like bisexual or something. I just read that because apparently she was in she's in a relationship with Poison Ivy, which is not surprising. Mm-mm. But it's just it's surprising because she would have broken up with the Joker. That's the surprising part. But yeah, well, what I what I've seen from just on the internet about that show is that kind of the focus of the the show is after she breaks up with the Joker, kind of what, what shenanigans she gets up to. Yeah. And that, that sounds exciting to me. She's been (laughs) working her way up since I want to say the beginning of the new 52 to where she just says, you know, no more Mr. J I'm, I'm going to do my own thing now and, you know, be, be my own, you know, crazy clown lady. Mm-hmm. and she's great at it she is, yeah she's great at it yes she is i don't know well i'll I'll wait until you guys give me some recommendations and then decide if i want to watch it but yeah. doesn't I, seem like my kind of thing yeah i still haven't i i still don't have a subscription or anything to dc universe but <laughs> i keep thinking that i need to but i also just i don't know i just don't really <laughs> find time to watch a lot of stuff gotcha it's definitely uh, worth a, a month or two of you know, watching the shows that they have and seeing which ones you like. I definitely recommend um, Titans just to see how they how they they do it. And they're having se- they're coming out with season two this year as well. Are they? Oh, it's, I'm so excited. It's interesting seeing all the Titans characters as live as li- in live action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really like what they did with um, Starfire. Mm-hmm. Uh, to not to spoil anything for Hunter, but don't spoil it. It's very different than how she was in the cartoon and i imagine probably closer to what she was in the comics which i'm not really familiar with so i'm somewhat i'm a a little i'm actually a little more familiar with her in in the comics uh i'm trying to think of i think it's the uh outlaws maybe something like that uh 
where she's she's a member of that team and it's it's also got like red hood and uh what what's his name what's Arsenal. archer yeah arsenal uh okay it, so they're kind of a anti-hero ish mm-hmm. group i guess um and i i've i've read a little bit of those so in terms of comic books uh you know and adaptation i can imagine her being a little more like that mm-hmm. if, if that's what she's like uh you know a little yeah and like of course i wasn't expecting it to be like a kid's show yeah. <laughs> like the one i grew up on but you know i was very surprised and honestly very pleased with th- how kind of polar opposite it was and how how much more grown up it was and it was really really epic and fun yeah well so, also highly I, recommended i have to ask you a question real quick because this is just something that's been bug- bugging me so while we are still on the subject of uh, dc and all that real quick i just want to ask is uh is the robin in that is this is this nightwing is it um, uh, damien uh, not damien wayne is it um well is it damien wayne or is it uh what's his face i'm blanking uh, is dick, dick grayson dick grayson it's dick grayson yeah, yeah i think so yeah you know and <laughs> one of the things i was watching from uh comic con was it kind of bugged the hell out of me uh because i feel like some of the people working on some of the voice actors working on like the animated there's a there's an upcoming animated batman uh movie i can't remember right now which one it is batman uh, hush yeah, yeah yeah hush and they were saying one of the one of the actors was saying well you know a difference between like our films you know our storyline currently and the uh comics is that you know batman here has a son and he didn't have a son in the in the comics and you know so robin is damian wayne and he was never he was never robin in the comics and i'm just like you you really you really don't know what you're talking about yeah <laughs> does it read comics or <laughs> where are you getting your source material from <laughs> right <laughs> i'm like uh, I I feel less confident about how this is going to go. Well, I mean, I guess not because, you know, he's not writing it. <laughs> I guess he just has to do voice lines, but still it just uh, it bugged me. <laughs> Don't worry, someone will correct him. There. Yeah, nobody did on screen, which I guess that makes sense, but it may, it makes me worry for the entirety of the cast. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that was just that was just a little thing. Uh, so for me, one thing that I'm that that I got kind of excited about was one of the first things I saw from San Diego Comic Con. Uh, I saw a trailer, a video game trailer for Black Sad, and I, I don't know if either of you know what Black Sad is. It's a uh, and the game is called Under the Skin. That's what it is. Black Sad Under the Skin. Uh, so it's under whose skin? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's kind of weird. It was actually a co- uh, a graphic novel that I had to read in college for one of my classes. It was a I don't know, like a culture class. So we read graphic novels, which was awesome. Yes. And so <laughs> Black Sad was like the first one that we had to read, and it's basically it's kind of hard to explain uh it follows the main character like i think his name is john blacksad and he's like a cat person and he's but he's like a detective and he's really kind of i don't i don't know uh grumpy kind of grumpy cat i guess yeah maybe that's too on the nose <laughs> and uh, so you know like the whole world is like these animal people but they're not they're never referred to i don't think as like animals they actually re- refer to each other as like people like man woman all that so it's just that was one thing that i remember about the whole thing but besides that that's getting away from the main point it's just a really well done graphic novel and it's got some really cool stories and i don't know how the game is going to play out actually because i'm thinking maybe it it looks to be sort of like a you know more narrative driven game so kind of like uh maybe a telltale game was or something i don't know but it 
because it doesn't seem to be focused around action or you know actually doing stuff a lot but more around uh probably like solving crimes and everything and it's just it's it's really cool i think i i loved it and i think it's worth i think it's going to be worth checking out so i'm excited to and they're turning this into a, a series or a movie uh it's a it's just going to be a video game okay oh okay okay gotcha oh uh, what platforms uh i don't know for sure let me let me check uh black sad under the skin hopefully okay ps4 xbox one switch mac and uh windows okay <laughs> The main ones. So good. yeah, yeah, looks good. Uh, oh wait, was it already released? No, that can't be right. Okay. Anyways, maybe it wasn't just announced because now that I'm looking it up, I'm seeing some weird stuff. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it had been announced before, but it looks like something uh, for November. Looks like release date for November. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I if if it wasn't just first announced uh, at Comic Con, this is the first I heard of it. Yeah, I kind of doubt it because I'm uh, seeing. I mean, first of all, it's going out in November, so that's pretty soon. But I'm seeing pretty complete art and gameplay like stuff on uh, Steam. Oh damn! Yeah. yeah. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of companies like to do that for games. The games are even Netflix for things that are you know, coming coming out soon they'll put a little you know thi- a little a little um you know low detail mm-hmm. or some kind of promo thing for it just so people know hey it's going to be on here you know when it's, when it's ready you'll see it also i mean some some companies i feel like to uh wait until they're pretty far along in development before they actually announce something that way there's you know, which I think would is a good marketing move. That way, you're not building hype and giving a lot of time for it to die down and for people to kind of become worried about it. You're kind of announcing, getting people hyped, and then releasing while people are still hyped. And uh, I could see it both ways. I feel like for something a little bit more obscure, that's probably a better way of doing it. But clearly, that's not what. Marvel's been doing and uh, <laughs> announcing things years in advance is working really well for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. true, true, true. But yeah, uh, hyped just to keep them guessing, <laughs> give them a little taste of the plan, even though they don't know everything that's going. They can't tell what's going to actually going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What and you know if we're switching now to Marvel, there's a lot to talk about with Marvel stuff. <laughs> uh, Boy, we got our actual like two year. Uh, if you, I guess you don't really count this year, uh, but we got our 2020 and 2021 roadmap for the MCU. Is, and, that, is that the actual time frame? Uh, yeah, yeah, for now, for uh, phase four. Yeah, the and last I'm, thing, I have the timeline pulled up here, and the last thing I'm seeing is November of 2021. Okay, yeah. so I was thinking it was like going into 2022, but I so, remember that half of it was on Disney Plus, and the other half was going to be film. Well, is a, a so, really new and different way of releasing like your movies and TV, your 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 you know content, uh, which is gonna you know it's gonna be, it's, it's it's it shows how far they've come from you know back in 2014 when they did the Phase Three announcement and they announced like a crap ton of movies for mm-hmm. the next five years. Yeah. Well, so this one, you know, now they got a lot of stuff okay so yeah phase four uh we got some really exciting stuff uh next year the first one obviously is black widow which to be honest i wasn't you know i wasn't super excited about it when it was first announced like we've known about it for a while i've never been like super excited about it but i you know i was doing some research uh, this weekend, and I am more excited about it now. Like, because they've they've kind of showed, uh, they've said who the villain is, I think. And actually, I don't even remember if he's the villain, but at he's least a character that will show up. He's definitely mm-hmm. the enemy because there was concept art of her fighting him. You know who I'm talking about? Taskmaster. Yes. And I love Taskmaster. 
Taskmaster. And I honestly, I don't know a lot about him. I, I know a very little bit, but I just, I like him a lot. And I think he's an awesome character just from what I've seen. And I'm super excited to see him in the Black Widow movie. Yeah. He'll be a, a challenge for her to outthink him, who, who a guy who already outthinks everyone. Yeah. Or, you know, who know well, who knows who Taskmaster is in this movie or how they're gonna they're gonna twist they're gonna twist it some way or another. But yeah. he is a he's also always a great villain, typically an X-Men villain, but or adversary anti-hero, what have you, but he'll be a good uh add in add into the movie. Yeah. And it's about time for Black Widow, you know, after being dead pillars uh, yeah. of the Avengers. Yeah. Uh so yeah, I'm excited for that a lot more now. And I'll I'll tell you what, I'll be way more excited after we see a trailer eventually, although I don't think we'll see that till at the very earliest, like December this year, maybe November, but we'll probably start seeing it next year. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for uh, the new, and it's going to be a year and a half out or whatever, but I'm excited for uh, the new Doctor Strange. Oh yeah. Super they high. said that it's going to be like legit kind of scary. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. Uh, Which, and that's not even really, like a year and a half. That's like two years out. It's a, yeah, basically. Yeah, it's a year and ten months. Yeah. Um, but no, like I'm, I am super excited about that. And also because you know they talked about kind of the format that they're taking with the the shows. They're saying those aren't going to be like really full series that like continue. They're going to be like uh, mini series. So, you know, they're yeah. going to be set up to be, like, one season or something and then, mm-hmm. you know, kind of tell their story over a few episodes mm-hmm. and then, you know, that's it with that. And a lot of them will kind of lead into other things. So, like, yeah. WandaVision, that's going to lead apparently directly into Doctor Strange in the multiverse. Yeah. Well, and it says that that she's going to be in Doctor Strange. But they – so, and essentially what it comes down to is the, the TV shows are – a much more significant part of the canon than yeah yeah they supposed, could be yeah. supposed to be film quality as well mm-hmm. so, so a lot more significant than the netflix marvel shows yes. mm-hmm. yeah which, the Hulu ones or which the Apes, while they were great uh they have no meaning to anything <laughs> <laughs> and i feel like it's a really good idea because i i think the probably the only complaint i had about endgame was that it was just a lot packed into what was a an abnormally long amount of time but still just not enough time yeah yeah right and so turning something into a a tv show format is going to be able to have them really be able to flush things out and take their time rather than trying to put you know these epic stories into three hours they can make it six or seven or whatever yeah and you know just tell your tell your you know movie do your micro movie mm-hmm. on this platform and it's out there and you know you you told your story yeah mm-hmm. and you know i think it's honestly i think it's like the natural progression for for marvel to take in this because you know like they've sort of been doing that you know over over many years now you know they've created this universe where you can tell kind of pretty much one one general story that is made up of many different characters and different parts uh and then kind of you know bring them together through this line you know through the avengers and you know all their separate stories and everything but now i think it it makes a lot of sense for them to have like these short mini series that can really flesh out characters and like a very specific characters uh, or a few characters like stories, storylines mm. and do them really well, tell them in movie quality, hopefully like movie quality mm. uh, production and everything and writing, but you know, really give it that time. Like you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, I feel like the way things are going anyway, and I've had conversations with people about this, um extensively how we're we're kind of looking for these more complex long form type stories things like like game of thrones that's 
you know, really involved and has lots of characters and lots of moving pieces, they're becoming increasingly popular. And so I think moving to a TV format is really the best way to, to sort of approach that demand. Yeah, yeah. I have so many characters that are, have been minor characters in movies for, mm-hmm. you know, since the start of the MCU. And now they're, bec- they're becoming the major characters. Yeah. But, you know, I, I can see them being a little worried about, can this person hold up a, a movie franchise or mm-hmm. this person manage a solo movie or, you know, a team up movie? Let's we'll see how it works. And Disney Plus seems like a good way to help their platform and give them the time they need to give them, give the keys characters their, their long, well, their arc to kind of catch up to where they're as mm-hmm. almost as iconic as the older characters. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I went and looked up Disney Plus because I'm like, what else even is going to be on it? Everything. Do we care about any el- anything else? And like, no, there's a good bit of stuff on here. But yeah, there's going to be quite a bit. It's going to be interesting. I think uh, awesome. I may be wrong about this, but I I want to say um, the Boba Fett thing is going to be on there too. I think I see something about that. Yeah. The Mandalorian yeah. is supposed to be on there. I don't know about the Boba yeah. Fett movie. No, I wasn't saying I think, the movie. I was thinking I was talking about uh, the Mandalorian. Right. Yeah. Uh, could, no, they scrapped the Boba Fett movie a while ago. They did. Yeah, right. Because they weren't, you know, they were going to do the Han Solo thing, and they were going to do the Boba Fett movie. I think they just scrapped scrapped that. I haven't heard anything about Boba Fett. I knew Han didn't do as well as they planned, but uh, yeah, I think it was because of that that they scrapped it. Which I mean, you know, seeing how terrible Rogue One was. Of course they scrapped it because, you know. What are you talking about? Uh, Rogue One was terrible. Hunter. That sounds like an opinion, not a fact. Uh, it, it, is, it is actually a fact. I've no. done extensive research on this. I don't think you're being 100% truthful. No. Hunter. I think you liked Rogue One. 100% of people surveyed said that Rogue One was a terrible movie. That's not true. Wait, uh, I was surveyed. Let's do this. I was surveyed and I said it was terrible. So it's 100%. Oh, you're 100% of Hunter. 100% of people named Hunter read that he did not like it. <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was the actual research done. Here we go. Oh, yeah. We're actually going to look it up on Rotten Tomatoes. No, okay. 84%. We're getting, we're getting 84%. Right okay, it doesn't matter. Liked it, it doesn't matter who. On Rotten Tomatoes. It matter who. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I... Okay, we're, we're talking about Phase 4, okay? We're not talking about Star Wars now. <laughs> and what is or is not the worst... Ro- we will be revisiting this topic. Okay. Um, but no, actually, one thing I thought uh, I kind of wanted to get into a little bit uh, was, you know, you talked about characters that were introduced kind of earlier on in the MCU but haven't really had a lot of time to shine. Uh, although that's sort of deb- debatable. Um, I am a little surprised about uh thor 4 love and thunder yeah yeah i'm i'm surprised more than anything that natalie portman wanted to come back (laughs) yeah because i thought she was just done with it yeah i thought she just didn't want to do it anymore and i was like okay i mean i know in the comics uh her character, I'm blanking on her name now, uh, Jane Foster, there we go. Uh, she she took over Thor's mantle, uh, at least for a while. I don't know if she's still doing that, but uh, I know she took over as Thor, and that's, that's a thing. And I was kind of thinking that at a time, I was pretty sure they were going to go down that path. But then I had heard all the stuff, you know, from about her not wanting to show up anymore and just not wanting to be a part of it. And then, you know, they had like the, well, I've been seeing the picture with her holding the hammer at Comic Con and it's apparently been confirmed and mm-hmm. it's been confirmed that, uh, uh, what's her face? Valkyrie is a lesbian. Uh, I think bisexual. I <laughs> think they straight up said lesbian as I recall. She- that's, that's what I heard at least. And I, my information could be wrong. Before the, before Ragnarok came out, they were saying she. It was not too long before the movie came out. After they had done some, you know, advertising and stuff, and let people know it was coming, that she was like, "Oh yeah, Valkyrie is by bi- this Valkyrie is by like she is in the comics, or or this Valkyrie is by." Um, and I think because, and of course, you see that in Ragnarok that she's has an attraction for Thor, but I think they're gonna play on that, you know, 
with her being in, you know, in, in, in this movie now, they have some freedom to do some more freedom to make, expand on that some more. Okay. Okay. And if you recall, Grandmaster was, you know, given uh, Thor and Loki the eye. Uh, so I think there'll be a lot more, you know, just, you know, letting it be as far as sexuality goes um, with these new movies. Well, especially the ones in space. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so maybe it is maybe it is bisexual. That's what I'm seeing here. Uh, also, seen some information about uh, the Eternals, but uh, I'm kind of excited for the Eternals anyway. Um, yeah, so it's just they're kind of really expanding their roster with that that kind of thing. You know, the whole sexuality part of it a lot now, uh, which is interesting. Yeah, and, and Eternals is also going to be another one of their big epic space cosmic you know yeah movie. Uh, and i'm excited to see what they do with that because i'm i feel like i'm one of the few people at least in my circles uh that actually is familiar somewhat with who the eternals are yeah, i feel like nobody else that i talk to ever seems to know right this is going to be kind of like guardians of the galaxy territory where yeah. everybody was like who the crap are these people here and what are they doing in you know my marvel movies yeah um, but it's gonna be weird though apparently they're bringing in angelina jolie so that'll yep. that'll be interesting and sam salma hayek i always have a hard time with her name salma hayek which that'll be interesting yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how they're gonna do that for sure but it'll be, yeah, interesting. It'll be interesting i'm really excited about um loki yeah oh, well, yeah nice. i nope. i'm I'm definitely excited about that. I'm assuming we're going to be picking up after he escaped in uh, you know, yeah. the Tesseract in Endgame. Yeah. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, conversations about how the Loki of back then, right, of the time where he was, where he picked up the Tesseract in uh, Endgame. Is it Endgame? Yeah. Um, is ve- he's a very different person. Well, yeah. than sort of the modern, like the newest version of Loki. So it'll be interesting to see sort of what kind of hijinks he gets up to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because that's, yeah, it's just, it's interesting. And then, of course, there's the What If animated series that's going to be coming out in 2021. That's mm-hmm. animated? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I am super excited about that. I'm also, when I first heard that it's going to be animated, my first thought and I'm assuming this will not be the case, <laughs> honestly. But my first, the first image in my head was imagining that it would be like into the Spider Verse kind of style, which mm-hmm. I highly doubt it will be. But it sounds more like alternate timelines, you know? Yeah. What if? And I, like I love the what if stories in the comics. There's a bunch <laughs> of them, and I'm always a fan because they're ridiculous and they can do like whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be in- interesting to see i mean i guess like the <laughs> my brain immediately goes to marvel's doing something animated that's crazy and it's like well when i hold up they're owned by disney so like clearly yeah. animations up their alley but i do think it'll be really interesting to see what they do with it yeah i i, I think too and i i definitely agree with that because even though it's disney and they're great and marvel has had some you know, they've definitely had a lot of animated stuff. I always think DC does animated better. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. DC has the animated market, which... Well, it, up till like, now... It's, it's great, but it's great for me because I enjoy it. And I love, I love the freedom that it allows them. Mm-hmm. But also, I feel like... There are just so many great stories in the DC animated stuff, you know, just the DC comics. And the the audience for animated is a lot more narrow, I think, Mm -hmm. than it is for live action film. Sure, sure, sure. I would honestly argue, though, that not only does DC kind of, are they kind of ruling the animated superhero game right now, they just kind of, like, TV shows in general have been their ballpark for the last couple of years. Yeah. Marvel's done a little bit there, but hasn't really experimented much. And we all, I'm, I think we can all t- t- kind of agree. DC does great in their TV shows. And then 
was somewhat lacking when it comes to their movies. And so it'll be interesting yeah. to see if, if Marvel can, you know, build the same sort of things and tell the same sort of stories in TV shows that they're currently doing in movies to see if they're, they can translate from one to the other better. Yeah. And that, that is one of the things I'm looking really forward to, or I'm not necessarily looking forward to, I'm just really interested to see what it's, what it's Mm going to be like, you know? Yeah. And I don't, but it's also, I still feel like seeing this plan here, I still feel like it's going to be hard to compare because, you know, their shows that they're looking at, their series are going to be, as we said, more isolated, like Mm -hmm. a one-off series. Whereas obviously, you know, like they just showed trailers and stuff for like season six of the flash season eight of arrow, (laughs) uh, season, whatever the hell of (laughs) legends of tomorrow. I don't know. I I, like tomorrow's got to be like no more than two or three, right? uh, uh, Yeah. Like five. Yeah. What? Yeah. Season one, uh, was, 2016 and then huh. year they had two, season two come out at the hmm. end they, had their, they they started that typical fall season and they've been doing that ever since i think this year they're starting back on the winter of, interesting starting in the winter of their their series their, their series so they've covered they they've they've covered a lot of they've, made, they've plugged a lot of seasons in the last four years so the know, only one five. um the only one that i've gotten into is supergirl I love Supergirl too. Honestly, well, I loved, I'm going to put that as past tense because I haven't really been keeping up with any of them because I just, I don't know. I, well, you all know what's coming, right? Uh, yeah, to a degree, but nothing specific. Crisis on Infinite Earths. I thought they just did that. Yeah, I saw that. <clears throat> they did Elseworlds in a, oh. at, the, at their last crossover, but this one is going to be uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Earth's um, mm. Arrow has its last season, which is going to end during the crossover. They're going to introduce mm. uh, Batwoman, the Batwoman series, and I'm interested to see Batwoman. It's just going to be crazy to see how they're going to, you know, adapt the storyline and, I guess, I guess break off into a new like era of the shows or mm. see what shows see, see which direction the shows going to go after this. Yeah, well, honestly, I have, uh, mixed feelings about having to go watch for three other tv shows in order to watch a full crossover right the way they've done it is weird but yeah, yeah. i mean it, you can it's one of those things oh, sorry sorry <laughs> it, it's one of those things that makes a lot of sense if you're keeping up with each of them regularly because you know right. they're like there's like one each night or something mm-hmm. so if you're watching Always. that yeah. on you know the days each day it comes out or even like the day after each one comes out then you know you're you're pretty much set. Yeah, but if you're just trying to binge watch Supergirl on Netflix, yeah, like some of us. Yeah, but yeah. well, they also do recaps and a lot of the, you know they have 22 episode seasons, 22, 23 episode seasons. Mm-hmm. A lot of those are filler episodes, and they and in the recaps they do give you the relevant information. Yeah, but it's made to where you can fo- you can follow from the show that you like, mm-hmm. and you can just jump into you know uh, uh, the episode that the that the that the you know the crossover yeah. art goes to next yeah but now my netflix is like you liked this one episode of arrow go watch the rest of it and i'm like i don't want to yeah. it's such a hassle Ugh. and you don't I'm, have to and i mean <laughs> but you get there but you'll have to but you got to get the rest of the story to yeah yeah and maybe and maybe they they use that as a way to say hey you know maybe you will like this show after watching this one episode and seeing these characters and you want mm-hmm. to start from the beginning mm-hmm. yeah. well and you know honestly it's just again as you said hannah it's it's a lot of work <laughs> to try to keep up with all of them mm-hmm. yeah. and I, i'm kind of like i'm in the same boat but also i feel like maybe now it's because it felt a lot more like a lot of work when i was in you know when we were in college and it felt like everybody was talking about it uh was you know keeping up with it and i'm trying to just I don't know. I, I'm trying to race to keep up with every show so that nothing gets spoiled for me yeah. and people aren't talking about it when I'm not ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think maybe now or sometime soon would be a good time for me to start picking them back up again and kind of taking them at, at my own pace. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Not ever leaving my house 
uh, one of the perks is not having to worry about spoilers yeah. Yeah. <laughs> except on the internet but like i know how to navigate around them for the most part yeah, that's pretty much me exactly right now <laughs> when it was just arrow and flash it was a lot i guess it was a lot simpler it was, well, it was a lot it was a simpler time yeah, yeah. You still have to watch out for spoilers, but it wasn't as much that you had to keep up with. Now it's a little better, as in you don't have as many spoilers, you know, from people. You know, it's not as, I guess, new, I guess not as yeah relevant. Or yeah. People, are, <laughs> people don't talk about you know the show as much, the shows as much, or you know, because yeah. there's so many of them, and they're, everybody's just trying to follow along. Yeah. And what is there? Just the is there just four of them uh, right I think now? So, yeah. Well. Uh, well, not include well actually there is also like black lightning right yeah but it's not connected to the Arrowverse as we okay know. i was thinking uh, it was is it titans was... no okay no, no, so no, no, no. let's say uh there's four that's still like each year each season that's what you said like 22 episodes 22, per... 22 episodes well, yeah so that's like 88 episodes are... yeah list <laughs> is usually shorter but yeah yeah i feel like it would work really well for someone who had cable and you know every you know monday tuesday thursday friday or whatever ate dinner in front of the tv yeah but for anymore yeah yeah, do do any of us have cable i do not i don't Uh, i can't get this i can't get the show uh i used to be able to when i you know back back in atlanta but we didn't we stopped using cable when we moved to change departments and yeah on you know, using the app and other means of watching tv yeah so it's interesting because i i was thinking about making a comment earlier about the just the massive number of streaming services out there at this point and trying to keep track of all of them and i want to watch the original dc universe shows and i want to watch the disney plus stuff but it's it is just a lot but yeah it makes sense because people don't watch cable anymore. And especially if you're trying to cater to sort of the, the growing up audience right now, Mm -hmm. you're going to be doing a lot more stuff online and it honestly still might be cheaper than cable. That's what I was doing all of them actually. Cause you know, some of them, they're uh, most of them. They're not really expensive. Disney plus says it's seven a month. Yeah. That's not bad. No. I mean, I feel like, Netflix has been increasing, and maybe Hulu as well. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. just getting ready for the next streaming services. Um, yeah, gonna come up and try to usurp them and take away, you know, cl- take away, you know, people's attention. Um, and I and need Hulu. Become a little more. more I need more Hulu. You have to fi- find which one, pick which ones you want, because you can't get all of them. Otherwise, you're basically just gonna have cable again. Mm. Yeah, but, but I, cable, I mean, cable, yeah. cable that you can choose more specifically when you're allowed to watch something right yeah it's one of those things where it's like when we were in college i don't know if if you guys ever complained or heard complaints about um paying for like the sports facilities and stuff it's like why would i pay for this thing i never use i don't even remember (laughs) did we have to pay for that yeah we had to yeah we had like pay a little bit part of our fees were for the football team or something oh that's um Right. Exactly, right? So right. I feel like <laughs> with cable, you kind of end up with the same thing versus all these subscriptions. You are just getting specifically what you want. Yeah, yeah. So, so all right. So we've talked, uh, we've talked about what we are getting, what has been announced, uh, just a little bit. Obviously, there is a lot that was announced, and uh, there's a lot more to talk about still. But uh, what what are some characters that you guys haven't seen yet or haven't seen in the uh current timeline for like marvel or dc uh and uh maybe in games or you know some characters that you haven't seen in games lately or at all that haven't had you know justice done to them that you would like to see i saw an article about question uh very wordy question yes uh about um some new x-men comics and i looked at those and those seemed really interesting and i just wish they were x-men movies because i love hugh jackman i'm so done with wolverine i'm pretty sure they're done with (laughs) hugh jackman as wolverine (laughs) but like there's so much potential for cool stories and you have really a lot of really cool characters um and i was 
I love X Men, and I was pretty disappointed with Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see it all way. I wanted to, but then I listened to like someone discuss about how they it was kind of botched, and it's just like ah. Uh, like, Jean Grey spends a lot of the movie going, when I get angry, I hurt people. Bad things happen. And it's like, okay, Jean, we get it. We're, we're past that. Like, yeah. Like, it Freaking was, get yourself under control. Like, it was it was a fine movie. Like, it was all right. It, you know, I, it's kind of in the middle there uh, with the X-Men movies overall, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it's not... You know, not I feel like, fantastic, but I feel like the thing is the X Men movies have always been a little bit more serious than um, the like the MCU. You yeah. have a lot less of those comedic moments, and in general, everything is just a little bit more intense, like emotionally. Yeah, but they they're basically like kind of fighting for living, fighting for their survival, or trying to justify their place in the world. Yeah, and it's it, it's not as funny, and I feel like in general it's you know less colorful and fun but there there comes a point where it takes itself too seriously you're just like stop what are you doing and and that's been the problem i feel like if they gave it a nice fresh dose of humor and made it made it funny um you could like there's so much good material there and so many good characters i just feel like they're not doing them well yeah but i mean i think i think it's good to have those I think it's good to have some of those, you know, serious stories and, you know, serious stuff going on. I don't, it bothers me just a little bit when you see these movies that, you know, they have these big serious moments and very impactful things that events that happen. And then someone just comes in, undercuts everything with a joke. No, sure. But I feel like the flip side of it is when things that aren't that serious become serious yeah. and it's like or they overdo it yeah yeah i can see that yeah i know i get i mean i get it I, I do get it for sure um they've had their comedic moments though they recently they really tried it with uh they've been trying it more mostly with uh quicksilver <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and Which, thank god for quicksilver <laughs> yes and actually that made me think because uh, I was thinking this earlier, actually. Um, so we heard, I don't know if you guys heard this, but I, I guess they've announced nothing too specific, but that they will be rebooting Fantastic Four before mm-hmm. they reboot X-Men, X-Men into the MCU. It's about time. They yeah, I mean, that's fair. I think uh, they they cool. have more to recover from, I would argue. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> I've just, I've been wondering if... Because, you know, Scarlet Witch has some crazy-ass powers. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, in one of the... One of my favorite uh, ser- uh, story arcs in the X-Men comics was House of M. And basically, one thing that she does there is she kind of goes crazy with her powers and, like, brings back some people i think she brings back vision from the dead or something mm-hmm. and she just changes like everything because you know she can she can change reality yeah her powers are down to 11 in the comics and they try to make it a little more they doubt it's at there she's at five in the mcu <laughs> yeah and so i've actually i was wondering today when i was thinking about it, i'm like what are the chances that if they eventually get to that point and when they really bring x-men in what if they do something like that and that's how they bring Quicksilver back into the MCU? You know, because he died in Age of Ultron. And mm-hmm. so I could imagine a scenario where she gets, you know, she kind of loses it and then f- starts, you know, feeling real bad about, you know, and kind of, I don't know, like real sad and terrible and everything about, you know, him being dead. And kind of uses her powers to sort of bring him back to life. Hmm. Well, we have WandaVision coming out this year, and we also have she's also going to also going to be in in that same year. We're going to have Doctor Strange. That's in two years. In the, in that same year. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah but when, she, when the, that her movie, their, her series comes out, and then Multiverse Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness comes out, I think we'll, we might start getting some hints about how they could do it because I always mm-hmm. kind of pictured you know the X Men movies in a different you know universe. 
and they technically are another film universe, but how would they how how would they bring mutants into the, the MCU? There it doesn't seem to be a way to do that. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how they do it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, for uh, so you know, obviously we want to see you know we want to see those two franchises kind of brought back. Question though. MCU. Would we yeah. rather see Fantastic Four in a series on Disney Plus or a movie, or have their, their them have their own movie again? I, that's a really good question. <laughs> I it's tough to answer for me, honestly, right now. Because I feel I, like they need a movie. Yeah, I you know I think they need a movie, but I don't know that they need to be introduced in their own rebooted movie again. I think it would be good if they were introduced in, uh, you know, if we kind of at least got hinted at them in another movie. Right. Which supposedly they were technically hinted at in Far From Home. How? You saw it, right? I've seen it, yes. Yeah. Uh, The building that, uh, one of the buildings that Spider-Man swung through at the end uh, like in the mid credit scene or whatever, or maybe it was just the end of the movie. Yeah, it was the end when he was he it was back in his you know his you know regular yeah. suit and was swinging through the city before he picked yeah. up MJ. Uh, supposedly, one of the buildings he swung through was uh, the old Avengers Tower that has been sold and everything. And some people have been speculating that it looked like it could it could be the Baxter Building now. It uh, been bought by. Uh, I have heard that theory that it can turn into the... And so supposedly they have been teased uh, very subtly. And yeah, I don't know, but I think that would be... I, yeah, I still think it would be good, you know, if they really kind of expand on that and kind of introduce the characters, you know, in, in someone else's movie or in another like Avengers or something movie. Yeah, they find a way to introduce them in, in another series or film, and then I think I think they're 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 prime candidates for a, a series on Disney Plus, and then yeah. maybe give them a movie later. I don't. I don't yeah, know. I think I think some combination of the two would be good. Either introduce them in a movie we were going to watch anyway, or or give them their own somehow making that work. But I think pairing that with a TV show might be a really good way to do it. Or give Doctor Doom a series Mm -hmm. introduce them through that and then give the fantastic four a movie boom Mm. got it yeah (laughs) uh anyways uh one character that i'm i would love to see kind of rebooted uh like done really well in the modern uh you know comic book film era is i would love to see spawn spawn yeah yeah spawn um you know, he kills like everything in the everything everything super, supernatural. <laughs> yeah, and you know he he does like demons and stuff. He, he had his own movie a while ago, but it's pretty dated, <laughs> yeah. and obviously doesn't really line up with anything now. Uh, of course, we also got a uh, Blade, a new Blade movie announced. Yeah, that was that was heavy. Yeah, um, that was pretty unexpected. Sad because Wesley Snipes isn't going to be back in the role, which was, which was slightly teased a little bit from hearing that he was talking with Marvel. But then, but it makes a lot of sense to have you know Marshal Ali as Blade because he looks he can he looks the part. He probably has the the you know the charisma for the role. Then again, it's also annoying that he played Diamondback and Luke Cage, uh, which is set in the MCU. Um, well, but not really. But not really. Alternate timeline. I'll just, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am uh, also looking forward to this is a, this character, well, we were talking about Cuphead earlier. And <laughs> you want to see Cuphead adapted to the live screen? It is going to be, yes. adapted, it's actually going to be a turn to a Netflix series. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Yes. It's, I think it's, it's going to, it looks like it's going to be really a fun show for kids <laughs> and adults. Yeah. And I really it's like really it. really funny. That old time heal my dad. Get him, come here. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, Hunter, you're saying you want a Spawn movie? 
Yes, I want a new Spawn movie, and I because it looks like there's one in the works. Is there? Yeah. That'd be. I awesome. don't know from a very quick Google search. That's what I'm seeing. Oh, oh sh. Well, then I didn't do very good research, did I? Shame on you. And I accidentally cursed. So okay. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, you know, and also I was thinking about I would love to see him with a great video game as well because. I, he's had some, but those are also pretty dated now. I just want to see a modern one. Uh, done well. Interesting. Yeah. And there's, well, there's a lot. There's a lot I want to see. Let's just say that. Uh, That's love fair. Red Hood. Love to see uh, Jason Todd <laughs> as Red Hood. You know, just his whole story in uh, DC Universe at some point. Probably will because he is in Titans. Nice. Yes. Nice. As Red Hood or as Jason Todd? As Jason, as as Robin Two, Jason Robin. Todd. Okay. Nice. Robin Two. That's that's the unofficial name for <laughs> the second Robin. So, right, right, right. Robin Two for now, and but you start, you do see seeds of Red Hood in there. It's frustrating to me. Final thing for me, it's frustrating to me that with so much Batman, we've gotten so little Robin. Yeah, because there's freaking like five of them or something. Thank you. No, there's four and four. Several other sidekicks. It depends on what you want to consider as a Robin, because you know, exactly. But like, there's, there's four, come on. Well, four well, mainstream Robins. Well, yeah, when you say also, that, when you say that again, there's been uh, Dick Grayson, yes. Jason Todd, right. uh, Tim Drake, Tim Drake. Thank you, Damian Wayne. There's also been. I blank on the other one's name. There have been two female Robins, technically. Regardless, <laughs> we need to wrap up. But regardless, it's sad that we've got a gazillion steadily worsening Batman movies and no Robin. Yeah. yeah. Which, so which, many of them you honestly, could choose from. We haven't gotten a, a good new Batman movie in a while. It's been a while. But this, a while. Decade, this is a new decade, so I think they might learn from their mistakes and see that yes batman and having robin in the movies adds to the films and makes them yeah gives gives everybody that story that they want to see yes please yeah and so that would be great i would just love to see a whole bat family kind of <laughs> That'd be awesome one day. that's batman's always my favorite so i'm just gonna yeah all right we gotta wrap up yeah. well stop it mom uh <laughs> uh okay well so that's there's a lot more i want to talk about but we will that's that's what we got for today we didn't get to a lot of the video game stuff that i had kind of initially planned on but that's all right we can hit that next time or we can just never touch on it again i'm sure we'll get there all right so we all good yep josh you gonna close us out yep uh, that's all folks (laughs) all right very nice okay